Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Michael Lately here, Leadership Inner Circle, and we are on another episode for Meet Our Community, where we take the members of our group, our community, and discover a little bit about them, just so we can connect and add value to them. They can add value to you. I'm not going to go too much farther into this because we're already a little bit behind, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in our guest for this evening, which will be Lorraine. Hey, Lorraine, how are you doing today? I am great, thank you. Well, you guys can see that we're here on Facebook Live, and we're going to jump right into it. So, Lorraine, it says, when I asked you about a title about who you were or who you are, you said that you're a life facilitator. What is a life facilitator? Okay, um, so facilitator, of course, is someone who facilitates and uh, mm -hmm. facilitates actually means to make easier. Um, from the Latin or French word facile, I think it's the Latin word facile, and it really makes, it says to make easier. So Ooh, like it. it's also a guide. So the facilitator guides. So that is really how I see myself and what I see my life purpose being, um, someone who guides. So you shine a light on a path, um, I never really believed in giving anyone advice or in telling anybody what to do. So what what I do really is just try to make it easier, to draw out the knowledge that you have within yourself, because I believe that you do have all the knowledge and everything that you need, you actually have. And sometimes you just need um, someone to shine a little light on a path for you um, to help you find your own way. Uh, so that's what I did professionally. And then I discovered, even while I was facilitating, because one of the things I did also was to teach how to facilitate. And um, so I found within myself uh, that I was indeed a facilitator. So I facilitated, which was my job, and then I discovered that I was indeed a facilitator myself. So what makes you passionate about this facilitation? So my purpose that, you know, I discovered, you know, many years ago and continues to reveal itself mm -hmm. is to help people find who they are. You see, um, for anyone who's ever received an email from me, they'll see um, a word on my email. Like it's Espavo. The word I discovered some many years ago. And uh, um, it means thank you for taking your power. And when I saw that, I thought, absolutely, thank you for taking your power. And that was me. So within every one of us, each one of us, there is power that is just waiting to be awakened. And uh, I discovered that I was awakening it within myself. Mm -hmm. And because I was I myself was guided into facilitation. I realized that my purpose became to guide people towards seeking and finding their inner power. Um, and if we, each one of us were to do that, then the light that we shine in the world just continues to expand and we make the, our world a better place, basically. Well, that's, uh, I could tell you from personal experience, that's a very deep and very great approach to helping people out, Lorraine, because a lot of people, they have a lot in them. They have a lot of goals, a lot of potential, but a lot of times they have a hard time bringing that out of them. So the fact that now you do that, I think that's very helpful for people because they can kind of see that hope. They can kind of see that guidance that you bring them. So for those, for those who are listening or watching, um, Think about it. Think about it. what you're going through in a sense of if you're feeling stuck right now, if you're feeling lost, how are you getting out of it right now? Just yeah. start thinking about that. And I think that's important, Lorraine, that you bring that up because a lot of times people don't know. They, they don't know what their potential is because they've never had anybody, like you said, in your emails where you just you enlighten people right there and then. I mean, that's so that's so refreshing to have that. So when did you realize that? you wanted to 
be that facilitator for someone's life? Like, was it a certain part of your life or was it just something that just through years of training and experience that brought you into it? So it's a, comb it's a combination of both. I was sort of called into youth leadership. Of, seems like a hundred years ago, but it was probably in my early twenties when I was, or maybe late teens, 19, you know. So for me, it was very early. It was very early. Um, I ran a youth group, then a prayer group in my, you know, in my church. And then um, when I, I entered the banking industry, and um, so I was in banking, but what I really wanted to do was training. So I did customer service and service quality training. And when I did that, what struck me even then, so this was many years ago, that in order to serve, in order to give good service, you have to first understand yourself. You've got to first respect, you have to respect the other person in order to serve them. And people, then people don't really get that. So I wrote an article many years ago and it was, I titled it Service, Not Servitude. And because many people, you know, sometimes they feel that in serving someone, they are lesser than the other person. You know, you know, other, or even that person, other people might think that. But in order to serve, you have to first, you have to respect the other person. And to respect the other person, you have to respect yourself. So for me, when it came to teaching service, I realized that in order to give good service, you have to view yourself in a particular light first. And that respect for the other person can only come if you feel a certain way about yourself. So that was a bit of a revelation for me in those early days so that whenever i whenever i taught customer service it was always focused not on what i do for the other person but what i did for myself so you look because it's only if you're very well grounded in yourself that you realize when the customer is mean and angry and mad in front of you that person is not angry at you mm -hmm. and that person's behavior has really very, very little and many times absolutely nothing to do with you. But for you to realize that and to accept that, that has to come from a place deep within, deep within yourself so that you then don't take it personally. So that was the beginning of my journey, sort of, if you want to think of it like that, um, in looking at how do I serve somebody else and how am I able to do that? And that I'm only able to do that if I am comfortable with who I am within myself. And sorry, yeah, I had an alarm go off there. Yeah, so that's really what, and so that's really what it is. So it's looking at, in trying to deliver service, it came up. And then in around 1991, um, so I've always written a journal, I've always kind of kept a diary, but in, a, in 1991, I actually started um, what, you know, I call a spiritual journal. So it was actually journaling, looking deeper within myself mm -hmm. as a source of just looking deeper within. Later, I came to describe that not just as journaling, but learning the language of my inner voice. Mm. So I had to determine what was the, in, because if you think of it, how many voices do you hear inside yourself? A lot. I, uh, it seems like a lot, huh? Because you're having all these conversations. But there is a particular voice, there are two voices, the one that's in your head and the one that comes deep from, from deep within you. The one that's in your head tells you very often that's sort of connected to your emotions, telling you very often, um, you're a failure, you're not good enough, you need to do more, you need to set more goals, you need to, so that voice pushes you. The other voice that sometimes is very quiet and we don't really recognize until we start learning to recognize it, that other voice tells you, you are 
absolutely everything that you need to be. You are spirit. You are everything. You have everything you need and you are already everything that you need to be. And that voice, when you start to recognize that voice, it takes you deeper and deeper and deeper within yourself so that you can recognize the truly awesome human being that you are. And when you can do that, then you can see that reflected in other people and then you treat others differently and you treat them better. So going forward as a life facilitator and making your future collaborations with others, like what are you looking forward to as far as the future and what you're doing? So how is that connected to leadership? That is, as leading from above the line, we share that that actually, that self-discovery, understanding your inner self, your inner voice, recognizing it, that helps you to discover who you are. That leads you into seeking development, self-development. How do I become a better me? And we say there are five, what we call five sources of your inner power. And those are principal consciousness, Purpose, emotional mastery, understanding change, and knowledge empowerment. And through that, when you, in discovering yourself and in developing, finding your five sources of inner power, you display certain attributes. And those are integrity, honesty, um, compassion, empathy, you know, those virtues. And that creates your leadership aura. When people see that, they respect and admire you. That's why they respect and admire you. Um, that's why they recognize your integrity. They recognize that. And then they willingly follow you. That is when you are granted leadership. So for many people, we think that, you know, we learn leadership skills. And we say, what you're actually learning is management skills. You're learning how to manage. You're learning how to manage time. You're learning how to manage yourself. Those are management skills. The leadership comes from a place deep within you that is reflected in the person that you are, that other people recognize, and then they grant you leadership. So what I do is help, which is why I facilitate to help people find first that inner voice to recognize who they are so that they can find that power that lies within themselves that strengthens them and allows them to choose to choose what we call the above-the-line behavior rather than below-the-line behavior. So that they choose honesty rather than dishonesty. They choose integrity. They choose compassion. And they do this consciously and unconsciously because it comes from a place that they're settled within. So the coaching, the facilitating, is to facilitate along those lines, to help each individual find that within themselves. Um, management skills, yeah, I used to, you know, I used to do that as well, the training of management skills. At different, at a, you know, very little, at different time. I didn't, I didn't go very much into, I work with um, a company called IBB Global, and they, um, that company was a licensee for Leadership Management International. But I always felt at that time that what was missing was the individual. There was something that was missing, that we were teaching skills and development and planning and goal setting and people's lives were being transformed. But what was missing was that recognition of the inner voice that was actually powering you to be the person that you want to be. And I agree. So you hit so many different points and great examples just now. And I'm sure the viewers, we got people coming in saying hi. Um, I put up on the screen. But as you go forward, I think one of the biggest things that you really emphasized with leadership was that a lot of people only learn how to be managers. They never actually learn yeah. how to be leaders. And I think that holds so many people back when it comes to their, their own progression because they're thinking that they're a leader, but they're only managing people. They're managing tasks versus helping people out. And I know that's something that that's that was one of my weaknesses in the beginning.
But as I've learned and I developed my leadership skills, it became a lot easier to do. And it became more fulfilling when I realized I had to help other people. So I definitely think you make a great point. And um, for those that have heard Lorraine, make sure you comment, like, share this video because she gave you guys a lot of facts in in this past 15 minutes. A lot of good points that we can use right now this evening, Sunday evening, to apply to our teams, our groups, with each other. And I think, Lorraine, you did a great job explaining everything that you had, everything you got going on, because as a life facilitator, it's it's important for people to realize that they're not doing it alone, especially in leadership, because so many times we go at things alone. We go at tasks and responsibilities. So that's great. Lorraine, before we end tonight, do you have anything that you want to um, – share just maybe one or two lines just to let people know kind of keep them motivated well and it it just it's our philosophy the philosophy of leading from above the line which is simply that there is an innate goodness in each human being that seeks to be expressed you find it it is there within you just waiting to be um found that's it Wow. So everybody, every think about it, no matter who you walk past today or tomorrow, even if that person is grinding on your gears and they're bothering you in every way, there's some, there's something that's good in them. So keep that in mind. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lorraine. You've been great. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments, people asking, especially about those five areas that you talked about. So if you have a chance to throw that in the call, the, the notes, the comments below, because it'd be nice for someone to be able to follow up with those because I think they're very important for people to realize. So thank you. Thank you, Facebook Live. Thank you, Leadership Inner Circle. It's been a great night, and we will see you next time. Bye.